the Lord said, read the whole book of Mark, chapter 7. And the Lord is saying, he that has ears, let him hear. The Lord is speaking right now. Pay attention. Now, Mark chapter 7 is right after Mark chapter 6. Right after Jesus' own people rejected him in Nazareth. So, the people who were offended by Jesus Christ and reject him uh, need to make a choice. We renounce the spirit of offense off the people right now. That they will no longer reject Jesus Christ but receive him. So if you want to read uh, Mark chapter 6, because Mark, Mark is very to the point. Mark is boom, 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 right to the point. He's like me. As a matter of fact, my mom said when I was a baby, if I was born a boy, my name would have been Mark. And I love the book of Mark because he's straight to the point. He's like boom, boom, boom. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. So the Lord said, read Mark chapter 7. This is what the Lord is doing right now. He that has ears, let him hear. Mark chapter 7. And they came together unto him, the Pharisees, and a certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. God is speaking to the religious leaders, and he's speaking to the scribes, those who write, the writers. He's speaking to the scribes. He's speaking to those who write the news. Those who report the news, the religious leaders and the political leaders of that day, because the Pharisees were religious leaders and they were also political leaders. The Pharisees were hypocrites. They were rhinos, Republican in name only. They were all about their club. They were all about power, right? They had their own scribes, their fake news that wrote what they wanted them to write. Then they came together unto him, the Pharisees, and the certain of the scribes, and which came to Jerusalem. They came to Jesus. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, as to say, unwashed hands, they found fault. They came in with their religious judgment. All right. All their power, all their rules, all their holier-than-thou religious judgment. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands often, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. They're all about their traditions. Right? They're all about their traditions, their rules. Enforcing their rules. And when they came from the market, and when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be. But which they received to hold the as the washing of the cups and the pots, the, the brazen vessels and of the tables. And the Pharisees, listen to this. And then the Pharisees and scribes asked Jesus, Why walk not with thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? So the true disciples of Jesus Christ, the true Jesus who is there for the kingdom, is getting... What's he getting? He's getting a bunch of negative talk, right? Who are the ones that are being judgmental of the true people of God? Those who walk in the Holy Spirit, right? Us. The Pharisees with all their rules. The religious judgment, their tradition. But it's our tradition to do this, Freemasons, rhinos. You got to be in their little buddy-buddy club. You got to do what they want. 
They even got their own scribes that write what they want them to write. Sound familiar? And Jesus answered them and said unto them, Well, Esaias, this is the King James Version, right? Elisha prophesied of you hypocrites as it is written. You people honoreth me. I'm sorry. As it is written, these are the words of Jesus in red. Jesus says to the hypocrites, the Pharisees, and their fake news scribes, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How about in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandments of God. You hold unto the traditions of men as the washing of the pots and cups and many other such like things you do. He's calling them out. He's calling them out for their little rules and regulations. Their little Freemason brotherhood crap. Right? Their little good old boy little clubs and their little rules and all their little, right? He's calling them out. I don't answer to man's rules. I answer to God's rules. You see, all their religion rules, all their doctrine. Then he said unto them, full ye well, full well ye reject the commandments of God, yet you keep your own traditions. Is that what the Freemasons do? Is that the, what the Republicans do that say they're Christians? But yet they go to their Freemason meetings and do satanic rituals to Lucifer? Hmm? What about these Republicans and, and these, these politicians and even these church leaders that swear their supposed allegiance to Jesus Christ but go to their Freemason meetings and are under their 501c3 and do what the government tells them to do instead of God. Jesus Christ is not really the head of their church. They're going about the government's rules instead of Jesus. Right? They go along with the fake news and the fake news media. They're, they're evil scribes. For Moses says, this is the words of Jesus Christ, for Moses said, honor thy mother and thy father. And whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But you say, if a man shall say to his father and mother, it is Corbin, that is to say, a gift. Whatsoever thou mightest profited by me, he shall be free. And ye shall suffer him no more to do out aught for his father or his mother. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such things do ye. The Ten Commandments are God's commandments. You see, what God wrote with his own finger in stone. We are to keep God's commandments no matter what. But then there were also laws for, from Moses that came that were the laws of man for man. And the Pharisees not only took those laws, but they started making up their own doctrine. And as they started making up their own laws and doctrine, they started twisting what God said to do. In other words, well, if you give a gift, money, if you give a gift to the Pharisees and you give a gift, well, then you don't have to honor your mother and father anymore. You don't have to. 
If you give a gift, oh, what? This is what Jesus is pointing out to them. They were greedy. They took bribes. They twisted God's word. But as long as you did their doctrine and their rules, sound like what's happening with the government and those with the church that are in the 501c3? Hmm? Who are you yoked to? Mark 7. Okay, we're going to Mark 7. 5. And ye suffer him no more who ought to do for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect in your tradition, which ye have delivered in many such things, do you? And when he had called the people unto him, all the people, this is Jesus gathering a crowd. Jesus is gathering a crowd. He's addressing the Pharisees and their scribes. Sort of like President Trump. When he stands in front of all that fake news, right? And they got their microphones all stuck in front of him. And he's pointing to them. And he's saying, you people, you fake news. And he's got people around watching what he's saying to the fake news. This is what Jesus is doing. He's addressing their scribes. He's addressing the Pharisees. He said, you, you, you're fake news. You're fake news. This is what Jesus is doing right now. Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Listen up. Hearken your ears. Listen up and understand. This is what Jesus is saying, and you better listen. There is nothing from without a man, outside of a man, that entering into him that can defile him. No dirt, no food. All right? They were eating with dirty hands. Jesus and his disciples were eating with dirty hands, and they were probably eating with dishes that hadn't been ceremoniously cleaned. Like, I take communion, right? And I use a paper cup. Has this been ceremoniously cleaned? Clean? No, I pray over it, you know. But what Jesus is talking about, what goes into your mouth, what goes into your gates, what, go what comes into your eye gates, what comes into your mouth gate, what goes into your ear gates, what comes into your gates, what comes into your sexual gates, what comes into your hand gates, right? Here we go. There is nothing with outside of a man that entering into him can defile him. No dirt can defile him, right? But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile a man. What are you speaking? Are you speaking curses? Are you speaking religious judgment? Are you being a Pharisee? Are you spewing fake news? Are you a liar and a deceiver? That's what defiles a man. Not if he eats out of a dirty dish. Here we go. Mark 7, 16, which is the word the Lord gave us to pay attention to. He was saying, listen up. I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to the false scribes, the fake news. I'm talking to the fake religious leaders. I'm talking to the fake political leaders. You better listen up. And Jesus says, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. We better be listening right now to what the Lord is saying. And we better pay attention. And we better pray that these evil people in government and even evil people in religion fall to their knees and repent right now. I mean, they, they better, God fired a warning shot with that lightning. I'm telling you. And we can pray for them. 
Mark 7, 17. And when he was entered into the house of the people, his disciples asked him concerning a parable. Which was the parable. In other words, they weren't understanding. Why did you say that there's nothing outside of a man that can defile him, but what comes out of him defiles him? And Jesus said to them, are you so without understanding also how many people do you know that are out there still spewing lies, propaganda, still believing the fake news and repeating it, still don't see what God is really doing? They're still not getting it. And Jesus is saying this to his disciples. Do you not understand? Still, you don't get it. Do you not understand? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? Dirty hands, dirty cups, eating pork. Eating locusts. That's not what defiles a person. And these are the words of Jesus Christ in my red letter Bible, King James Version. And Jesus says to his disciples in Mark 7 19, I love the book of Mark. It's so straight to the point. Jesus says, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly. It goes, goeth out into the draught, purging all the meats. Jesus is talking about poop. He's talking about poop. I'll tell you what. This book of Mark. It, 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 Mark must have been one of those people that just told it like it was. He was like a President Trump. He, just, he was like me. He was told like it was. And Jesus was telling it like it is. Was it all pretty flowery, flowery language? Jesus said, listen, what you eat goes into your stomach and gets pooped right out. <laughs> that isn't what defiles you. You can eat a pack of bacon and the next day you're pooping it out the toilet. Or maybe the same day, depending on your level of digestion. <laughs> See, not eating pork, and th those were man's rules. They weren't God's commandments, right? They were man's rules, right? God's rules are the rules that he has spoken, okay? His Ten Commandments, what he spoke through his prophets, right? Elijah and Elisha, and, right? Let me go to Malachi. Why did God say, uh, you know, about the tithe? That was God speaking that to a prophet. That's what God wanted done. You see, those are commandments from God. And Jesus says, keep God's commandments. But we don't have to keep the religious rules made up by men. You see, the doctrine of the Catholic Church, uh, Satan, Hail Marys, um, Go to the priest and do your sins. That's all religious doctrine made up by man, not by God. But Jesus is saying, like Catholics say, and I'm not nothing against Catholics. I was a Catholic before, but they say, oh, don't eat, don't eat meat on Friday. Well, that could be a prophetic act of faith. You know, we, we do fast, right? We do fast, but, but Jesus is saying, that's not the most important thing. Jesus is saying, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, goes out through poop, purging all the meats. And he said, right, Mark 7, 20, that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed, proceed, 
evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, and murders. This is why I tell people we shouldn't say do what your heart desires because Jesus says the heart can be defiled. We should say, Father God, I come into agreement with your desires for me. This is how we need to pray. Type that in the chat. Father God, I come into agreement with your desires for me. I come into agreement with your desires for me, Father God. And this is why it says in um, Psalm 24, who can ascend to the holy place of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. He's not talking about washed hands. He's talking about hands that are clean spiritually. He's talking about a heart that's clean spiritually. And Jesus is bringing this up again. That which cometh out of a man that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, perceive evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, and murders, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lavishness, and evil lie, blasphemy. Pride, foolishness, and all these evil things come from within and defile a man. Who uses that eye? Who uses that eye for all their symbolism? Who uses that eye for all their symbolism? Freemasons? Evil eye? You see, Jesus is saying it's what comes out of the heart that defiles a man. Not what they eat or what they drink. But what defiles a man, what comes out of their heart, even thoughts of it, even thoughts of it. So say a person is not actually physically abusing children, but they're going on the Internet and watching child pornography. Jesus is saying that is an evil thought of the heart because that. Man desires, he's desiring it. It's in his thoughts. Jesus says even if a man looks at another woman and desires her, that he committed adultery in his heart. What? So we have to repent for the sins of our heart. We have to repent for our evil thoughts. So those that are putting child pornography out there or any type of pornography and people are even thinking about looking at it or look at it on the internet, the Lord is saying that is just as evil as the one doing it. What? Mark 7, 23, the Lord says, all these evil things come from within and defile a man. Who do you want working within you? Christ? How do we get rid of the evil that works within us? We go before the Lord. According to Psalm 24, we say, Lord, created me a clean hand, hand and clean hands and a pure heart spiritually. Purge this evil off of me, off of my heart. I put all these evil thoughts on the cross of Jesus. And you know what's amazing? Do you know what the next verse is? I about cried my eyes out when I saw this. Friday when Pastor Gino and I were praying over y'all. And I said, healing is the children's bread. We were talking about communion. We were talking about healing being the children's bread. And I spoke about the woman who was not a Jew that came to Jesus. And all she said, I just want the crumbs from your table, Lord. 
I just want the crumbs from your table, remember, on Friday? Who was uh, on Friday's broadcast? If you were on Friday's broadcast, I said healing is the children's bread from Jesus. He's the bread of life. And there was a woman that wasn't a Jew, and she came to Jesus. Now, she's actually Greek. She was actually Greek. She was a Gentile, and she came to Jesus. And he was saying, look, I, I've come for the Jews first because it's the children's bread, the Jews, right? But she said, Lord, even the dogs will get a crumb from their master's table. And he said, woman, your faith has healed your daughter and the devil has gone out of her. You want deliverance? You want deliverance for a loved one? You want a deliverance for yourself? You want deliverance for your life? Read Mark chapter 7, 24, and say, Jesus, I just take a crumb from your table. And today I'm delivered from all evil out of my heart. I'm delivered of all demons. My loved one is delivered of all evil. My loved one is delivered of all demons. Jesus is talking about deliverance now. Deliverance is coming to our children. And all we have to do is release our faith because he sent me to Mark with this lightning strike. He sent me to Mark 7, 16, and he said, read the whole chapter of Mark 7. And do you know what is included in Mark chapter 7? The woman who comes to Jesus and wants her daughter healed of all demons. And he says, she says, all I will want is just a crumb from your table, Lord. And Jesus said, woman, your faith has healed your daughter and the demon has gone out of her daughter in that moment. Are you praying for deliverance for your children? Are we praying for deliverance of all the demons that have been coming against our children? The Lord said, keep reading, Anna Marie. Because that lightning strike was for the children. It's for the children that were in trafficking. It's for the children, our children, because the demons have been attacking our children. And all we have to do is ask for a crumb of the Lord's table. And from this very hour, this very moment, the demons are removed off our children. Mark chapter 7, verse 24. And from thence he rose and went to the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into the house, into a house that would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. And the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him and that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it into the dogs. Jesus said, I came for the Jew first. The children. The Jews are the children of God. Jesus was not yet crucified and gone to the Father. Right? We all became children of God after the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. When Jesus presented us all to the Father through his death. And... Jesus came for the children first, was, was the Jew, and then he came for the Gentile. Healing is the children's bread. How do we become a child of, of God, a child of Christ? To receive Jesus Christ as our Yeshua Messiah, our Lord and Savior. But she didn't get offended. She didn't get offended. This is what she said. Jesus said to her, let the children first be filled. For it's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it onto the dogs. He called her a dog. What? Jesus was a Jew. He was there for the Jew first and then the Gentile. And then she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. She could have got offended, like Pastor Gino said. She could have got offended, but no. Instead, she released her faith. She released her faith. See, people get offended by me. 
because I come on very strong. But instead, I'm getting offended. Release your faith even deeper. Right? And saying, Jesus, I press into you even deeper, Jesus. I press into you even deeper. I just want a crumb, Jesus. I just want a crumb. And he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of that thy daughter. In other words, woman, because of your great faith and believing that just a crumb Right at this very moment, your daughter is delivered of that demon. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil had gone out of her daughter, and her daughter was laid upon the bed, fully delivered. Wow. So what comes after this warning shot? Jesus is first going to deal with the religious leaders. And he's going to deal with the government leaders. And he's going to deal with the fake news and the lying media. And he's going to say, who's really going to listen to me? Open up your ears. You better listen. And he's going to deal with all the children, all the demons that came on our children, anything demonic that came on our children because of these, these evil people. All we have to do is release our faith. And the demons will be removed off our children. Come on. Take this word for yourself, my friends. And then the rest of Mark chapter 7. Come on. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. I love that Jesus was on the coast of the sea. Then he went to the Sea of Galilee. Sea to shining sea. Did everything on foot. Through the midst of the coast of Decapolis, right? The Greeks and the Romans had a lot of control over the shorelines, okay? So the shorelines of the Mediterranean Sea, the shorelines of Galilee, uh, but Jesus went to those shores and took dominion of them, and he went from shore to shore. He, went, he, was, right, he was near where a lot of Greek settlements would be, uh, near the Mediterranean. Then they walked from the Mediterranean all the way to Galilee. Okay? He was, he, he was working the coastlines. Jesus is working the coastlines. And they bring unto him one that was deaf. And they had an impediment with his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude. Well, Jesus... Uh, be intentional, right? And then just take that person aside. Yes, he will. And he put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. What? Jesus spit on his fingers. He had just got, you know why he did that? Just to mess with the Pharisees. I think Jesus did that just to mess with the Pharisees. His hands weren't clean, right? The Pharisees had just bashed him for not washing his hands before eating. I think Jesus was like, watch this. I'm going to take my dirty hands. I'm going to stick them on my tongue. I'm going to stick them in this man's ears and watch him get healed. I think Jesus... Just did that to say, hey, look, all you Pharisees with all your clean hand stuff. Guess what? I'm going to stick my fingers in my mouth. I'm going to wet my finger and I'm going to stick it in these man's ears and do a miracle. I'll show you who the real who's got the real power of God here. You and your little hand washing rituals. <laughs> I think Jesus did that just to mess with the Pharisees. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and saith to him, Ephatha, that is, be open. Ephatha, be open. Ephatha, be open. We should do that, right? 
I have trouble with this ear. Ephatha, by the authority of Jesus Christ, ears be opened. I'll keep doing that till my ears open up. Because Jesus did it. He said we can do all things that he did. Looking up to heaven, he sighed. He filled himself with the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit is the breath, right? He looked up to heaven and he sighed. Jesus only did what the Father told him to do, right? He looked up to heaven. He breathed in the power of the Holy Ghost and he sighed. He received from the Father. He received from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit said to him, touch your tongue and wet it through your fingers. Stick it in the ear and speak this. He, Jesus said, I only did what the Father told him to do. So Jesus and the Father were making a show of the Pharisees. Like, watch this. We're going to show you Pharisees. I'm going to show you. Jesus does what God tells him to do. Even with dirty hands. Yeah. And straight away, his ears were open. And the string of his tongue was loosed. And he spoke plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much more great deal they published it. And they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He that hath done all things well, he maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Why does chapter 7 and Mark end that way? In other words, the, the scribes and the fake news will have to say and report what Jesus is doing. They'll have no choice. They'll have no choice. And he charged them that they should tell no man, but the more he charged them, there's so much more a great deal they published it. What does that mean? The scribes that were following him, even though they were fake news, they were forced to report it. So, Lord, thank you for Mark chapter 7. Thank you for showing us what you're doing right now. That all the media, even the fake news, will have to report what you're doing, Lord. Father, thank you for speaking through that lightning strike in Washington, D.C., that you're bringing everything to light, that you're dealing with the evil ones, you're, you're dealing with the child traffickers, you're dealing with those who have hurt children. And any anything demonic that came on our children, all we have to do is ask for a crumb, and our children will be delivered of all demons and everything of demonic and all, all darkness. All we have to do is moms and dads is release our faith, and you will do it. And then we'll be able to walk in signs, wonders, and miracles. And the fake news and the media will have to report what the, the works of Jesus Christ through us. They will have no choice. And that we are to pay attention right now and listen. Pay attention to what you're doing. And even though people died in that lightning strike, we pray for their families. We pray for them to have peace and blessing. But we must understand that you were speaking here. That it was a warning shot, and we must listen. Father God, we trust you. Lord Jesus, we trust you. Holy Spirit, we trust you. And on this day, we choose you, God. We choose you, God, in your righteousness. We choose Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, help us hear. Help us see what God is speaking. Give us discernment. Give us understanding. And let our hearts not be defiled. That we only speak what you would have us speak, Holy Spirit. And give us understanding of Mark chapter 7. And how we must pray right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, my friends, this has been quite a broadcast. I had to deal with a lot of things. I had to 
deal with a lot of situations. Um, I will have a separate reading of Mark chapter 7, uh, along with this additional uh, revelation of the lightning that hit the White House on Thursday, August 4th. The Lord is speaking here. He's firing a warning shot. He that has ears, let him hear. Mark 7, 16, the USS Wisconsin and the Millstone. And he's speaking about child trafficking, child traffickers. And uh, it's, it's going down. And we need to pray. We need to pray for those that take down child traffickers, which is the U.S. Marshals. We need to keep them covered in prayer. We need to keep President Donald J. Trump covered in prayer, who's taking down the child traffickers. And also, we need to keep the good military in prayer for this uh, assignment to go forth and that uh, people will fall to their knees and repent. Keep your loved ones covered in the blood of Jesus. And speak that scripture over them, Father. It says in your word that me and my household shall be saved. Noah and his whole household got to go into the ark and sealed it up safely in the ark, and they were lifted up above the judgment. And Father, I understand you have to bring judgment. I understand. So this is my household, and this is, these are my loved ones, and that you would do the same for me that you did for Noah, and that according to your word in Acts chapter 10, that you will send divine laborers right now, even today, into the path of my loved ones to lead them to Jesus Christ, and that your Holy Spirit will be with them and that you would have grace and mercy on those that do not know you, Lord, during this time of judgment. Because repentance is a free gift. Salvation is a free gift. Your grace and mercy is a free gift. And we trust you, Lord, that you are our Savior. And we just thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God. Have mercy on our loved ones, Lord. Bring them to repentance, Lord. Bring them to their knees, even tonight, Lord. We know that you can do more with them than we can. Even in an hour, even in a minute, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. We trust you, God. We praise you. We worship your holy name today, in Jesus' name.